Tattoos mean different things to different people. For some, it's the perfect way of standing out from the crowd and expressing themselves with ink rather than words. For others, it is a means of preserving their biggest memories in the flesh. But oftentimes, these intricate designs etched onto skin have deeper meanings than most people understand. And some of them can actually get you in trouble not only with law enforcement agencies, but also with the bad guys of the criminal underworld. So join me in this intriguing video as we explore the blurry lines between ink art and real-life consequences to reveal the tattoo that can get you into serious trouble. MS-13 Tattoos What you see on the screen are the images of inmates at the Penal de Ciudad Barrios prison, showcasing their sprawling ink art and confirming their affiliations with the infamous MS-13 gang. According to the confession of a former gang member, Gerardo Lopez, the codename MS actually stands for Mara Salvatrucha, which roughly translates to Street Tough Salvadorans, while the number 13 represents the position of the letter M in the English alphabet. Known for its notoriety, the MS-13 gang terrorizes the entire South, Central, and North America. It wields so much power and influence that it once caught the attention of a former president of the United States. To any member of MS-13 listening, I have a message for you. We will find you. We will arrest you. We will jail you. We will do, throw you the hell out of the country. Over time, the sight of MS-13 members has become synonymous with extreme brutality. But even beyond their love for violence, these gang members have developed a staunch devotion to wear and publicly showcase tattoos of the gang's emblems to anyone and everyone who cares to see them. Understandably, most MS-13 gang members opt to tattoo the gang's initials on their body, with M placed somewhere around the right shoulder and the letter S positioned on the opposite side. Interestingly, some of the inked body art they wear tattoos are inspired inspired by their religious beliefs. For instance, several members of the gang have been seen wearing a tattoo of hands clasped together in prayer and a rosary. A gang communication expert contacted by El Geraldo says this symbol represents the phrase, forgive me mother, for my crazy life. This mystery remorseful phrase carries an even deeper meaning than you would think. On one hand, it signifies regret for the crimes that they've committed. But on the other hand, it suggests that they're not willing to give up the life because they realize that it could lead to deadly consequences, including the death of their mother. MS-13 members also tend to ink tats showing the widely publicized illusion of the face of Jesus Christ. Some even take it a step further by incorporating the letters MS into it. Another religious symbol the Maras often ink on their skin is the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe, perhaps to show their dedication to the supposed supernatural mother and their strong beliefs in her protection power. Other notable symbols frequently drawn by members of the group include emblems of the devil's horns, tear tattoos, as well as laughing and crying clown faces, which represent laugh now, cry later. Members sometimes also have the numbers 6 and 7 tattooed on their body, which adds up to their magical number 13. Gang members have also been spotted rocking tattoos of yin and yang, a traditional philosophical Chinese concept that represents opposite but interconnected forces. Other less fancied symbols that are synonymous with the MS-13 gang include spider webs, barbed wire, and three points arranged in a triangular shape. Occasionally, you may also spot phrases like Cuidado, La Banda de El Salvador Esta Aquí, Viva El Salvador, or Cuidado Maravilla, El Salvador Esta Aqui, on their body. The MS-13 gang first originated as a violent street gang in downtown Los Angeles back in the 1980s. At the time, a couple of Central American countries like El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua were engulfed in civil wars. The unrest that ensued triggered the mass migration of refugees from the region into several parts of California, from east and downtown Los Angeles, all the way to the San Fernando Valley. From its founding base in LA, the gang has expanded expanded into new territories with an active presence in 42 states in America, as well as strong connections and crime footprints across several countries in the Americas, including Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico, and Canada. Currently, the MS-13 gang has over 50 to 70,000 members and multiple partnerships with other violent gangs, such as the Los Zetas. Aside from its scary tattoos, the gang adopts a three-word motto, kill, rape, control. And over the years, the gang has lived up to these words as it emerged as one of the most savaged criminal gangs in the Americas. At one point, the Honduran government revised its laws to introduce the death penalty for gang membership, but the MS-13 remained unfazed and even put up a stiff resistance. In a daring show of force, gangsters affiliated to the group stopped a bus and executed its occupants with a machine gun, killing 28 people, including women and children. Meanwhile, in the neighboring El Salvador, the MS-13 gang had so much that members as young as eight were mounting roadblocks and demanding a fee from road users. Anyone who failed to pay was 
was subjected to the wrath of older members. Interestingly, the United States also suffered its fair share of MS-13-sponsored violence. In one sad incident, members of the gang murdered four teenagers as part of its initiation ceremony in New York. The gang's appetite for executing people was uncontrollable so much that even something as basic as a disagreement with an MS-13 gang member could lead to the death of a person. That was the case for two high school girls, Nisa Mickens and Kayla Cuevas, who unwittingly had a dispute with some members of the gang. A few days after the disagreement, they were brutally murdered with a machete and a baseball. Another woman, Vanessa Argueta, was hacked to death for disrespecting a gang member, and when her two-year-old son started crying in protest, he was shot twice in the head. Crimes like this have seen the MS-13 gang members are among the most wanted criminals in the world, and as you'd expect, their tattoos are one of the easiest ways of identifying them. So for your own good, if you're ever looking to get your body inked, it's best to steer clear of any of the symbols, words, or phrases that are synonymous with gang. Chinese Triad Tattoos In Asia, across countries like China, Vietnam, Taiwan, Malaysia, Singapore, and Hong Kong, triad tattoos have become a symbol of style and criminality, particularly among members of a notorious transnational organized crime syndicate known as the Chinese Triad. The notorious gang seems to have a special likeness for mythical animals, with two of its most popular symbols being the dragon and the eagle. For members of the gang, the dragon symbolizes prosperity, strength, and health. It is usually drawn on the arms, back, or on the chest. Another animal adopted by the gang is the eagle, which symbolizes strength. These symbols are often complemented by emblems of Confucius. And for law enforcement agencies, the presence of one or all of these tattoos is sometimes seen as an indication that a suspect belongs to the Chinese triad. The notoriety of the Chinese triad is well documented all through history. The criminal gang was formed in the 19th century as a revolt group against warlords. The stiff resistance by the triad eventually led to the Chinese Revolution of 1911, and since then, they've grown in heaps and bounds, spreading their tentacles outside the continent of Asia into other parts of the world, including Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, and elsewhere. Today, the Chinese triad is regarded as one of the world's largest criminal groups, with an estimated membership of around 2.5 million people worldwide. In addition, the gang also reportedly controls around 85% of the world's opium and heroin supplies. Each triad family consists of between 260,000 members from all walks of life. In other words, the gang welcomes everyone and anyone who is willing to join. This includes lowly rated gangsters, serial killers, civil servants, judges, and other respected members of the public. According to official reports, a single Chinese triad family makes between $500 million and $10 billion every year. Much of this profit is garnered from illegal activities such as extortion, racketeering, narcotic smuggling, illegal gambling, loan sharking, protection rackets, human trafficking, and armed robbery. Generally, members of the triad are known for their staunch loyalty. But according to Lo T. Wing, a professor at the University of Hong Kong who studies criminal gangs in the region, the deepest allegiance of every triad family is to make money. They don't work for political ideology, Professor Wing said. Individual triad members have their own ideologies, but triads as a group, they only work for money. And as expected, they'd go any length to achieve this aim, even if it means breaking the law and committing all sorts of atrocious crimes. According to official data, the activities of the different Chinese triad families is one of the biggest contributing factors to the increase in the number of bound and mutilated bodies found in the famous Yellow River and other waterways across China. In Macau, for instance, the Chinese triad murdered three civil servants and a prison guard. During the same operation, the gang made a brazen attempt on the life of a police chief who very narrowly escaped the attack. In May 1997, three suspected gangsters were killed during a brutal war between two triad gangs. That same year, 15 people lost their lives in Hong Kong in a fire incident deliberately created by members of the Sun Yi of Triad Gang. Two years later in 1999, a vicious battle broke out between rival triad gangs on the eve of Macau's handover to China. This face-off disrupted the lives of over 500,000 residents living in the region at the time and also caused the homicide rate to rise exponentially. Fast forward to August 2009, a senior triad member named Li Tai Hung was knocked down by a car and assassinated by three knife-wielding men outside the Shangri-La Hotel in Hong Kong. Until his death, Li was a member of the Sun Yi An Gang and often regarded as the Baron of Sim Sha Tsui East by gang members. In fact, his death was said to have been the highlight of a long-running battle between the Sun Yi An Gang and the Wo Xing Wo crime group. Beyond personal attacks like this, triad groups are also known to have a strong level of political influence, such that they're sometimes hired to hunt down the political enemies of prominent politicians and critics of the government. Back in the early 90s, during the Republican era, the Chinese Nationalist Party used triad gangsters as foot soldiers against their political enemies.
parties. Similarly, in 1927, the party used the notorious Green Gang in Shanghai to intimidate union members and commit a brazen massacre in which thousands of communists lost their lives. Although rare, this uncanny collusion between the government and triad gangs has reportedly continued to happen in different forms across several countries, even to this very day. But of course, in most cases, members of the Chinese triad are seen as prime targets for law enforcement agencies all over the world. So ultimately, getting a tattoo that looks like theirs would most likely make you a prime target as well. Yakuza Tattoos Among the list of tattoos that can get you serious, Yakuza tattoos are perhaps the most colorful of the lot. But make no mistake, these motifs, popularly known as Irizumi, are not drawn for their aesthetic value alone. On the contrary, they're usually tied to the personal identity or experience of a gang member, and often portray a deep message that most people don't understand. For instance, the carp is drawn to symbolize courage, the dragon is believed to symbolize wisdom, the tiger represents strength, while the snake embodies the gift of healing. Similarly, the samurai Yakuza tattoos symbolize that a person is a warrior who makes noble decisions and does not succumb to fear. Typically, Yakuza tattoos are drawn with bright colors or complicated back outlines, and they're strategically positioned across the entire body from chest to shoulder, to the back and butt, and everywhere else that can be covered with clothes. Usually, members of the same Yakuza syndicate families tend to wear the same pattern of tattoos. As part of the ritualistic rites of the group, new members get inked in the presence of other people. Most of these colorful, codified arts adopted by members of this criminal syndicate group are inspired by the Shinto mythology, Sui Code and Tail, and ancient woodcuts that dates back to hundreds of years ago. Back then, most woodcut artists doubled as tattoo artists, and as a result, they basically applied the same technique used in woodcutting to carve tattoos. The process starts with the Hiroshi artist using metal needles and Nara ink to draw designs on the gangster's body. Once this special ink oxidizes under the skin, it turns to a blue-green color. According to folklore, it is believed that the more painful and bigger a tattoo is, the higher the commitment of a member to the gang. And that's perhaps why most Yakuza gang members tend to cover their entire body with tats. To understand the origin of the Yakuza gang, we have to travel back to the early 17th century. During this period, a strict caste system was enforced in Japan, which ranked people of Barakumin as minority. Most people of this ethnic group were criminals, and they did the worst jobs that no one else would do. Yet they were made to suffer discrimination from the government and the society. This unjust treatment forced members of the Barakumin to form a close bond, which eventually led to the formation of the Yakuza gang movement. Initially, they started out as Takia, a small criminal group that robbed and scammed people of their valuables and resold them on the black market. Another section of the group operated as an illegal gambling gang known as Bakutos. Historians believe that this ancient gambling ring was one of the first gangs to adopt mutations as a means of punishment for erring members. According to reports, the group had a tradition of chopping off the first joint of the little finger of offenders. This tradition was adopted to promote discipline and unflinching loyalty to the hierarchy of the gang. So by the time the group metamorphosed to become the Yakuza gang, this brutal tradition was upheld and meted out to people who choose to relinquish their membership. At the peak of its powers in the 1960s, the notorious criminal syndicate had over 180,000 members. The gang wielded so much power and influence that the mere mention of Yakuza sparked fear among citizens and gang members were literally seen as untouchable. A study by the National Police Agency in Japan, involving 2,885 companies, revealed that the Yakuza gang had tried to extort at least 337 of these firms. Even worse, the study showed that at least one out every five of these companies paid around 5 million Japanese yen to the gang. This is equivalent to over $30,000 in today's money. Beyond extortion, the gang also engages in other forms of violent crimes like murder. In 1998, a Yakuza gang named Kudokai gunned down 70-year-old Kunhiro Kajiwara because he refused to award government contracts to its members. Similarly, members of the same gang launched grenades into the homes of higher king officials working at the Kyushu Electric Power Plant. They also pelted the home of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe with Molotov cocktails. The gang has also been fingered in the murder of the famous Nagasaki Mayor Icho Ito and other vicious crimes like sex trafficking, inside trading, illegal dog fights, match fixing, and massive fraud schemes, resulting in the loss of nearly 2 million yen. Interestingly, despite these seemingly unforgivable crimes and the widespread popularity of the gang, security operatives do not exactly rely on Yakuza tattoos to identify gang members. This is partly because these tattoos over the years have become a symbol of style and confidence, and also because most Yakuza tattoos are often concealed with clothes. But nonetheless, inking any of the symbols affiliated with the group could automatically put you in the bad books of their rivals.
Hells Angels Tattoos. Known for its constant involvement in violence and hardcore crimes, the Hells Angels is one of the most recognized bikers clubs in the world, and perhaps even more prominent than the name and reputation of the gang is the body arts of its members. The most popular of them all is the Death Head Emblem. This mythical symbol is seen as the main logo of the group and is usually found on all members. The One Percenter sign, which symbolizes the gang's rebellious disposition, is another tattoo that you're most likely to find on a member of the Hells Angels gang. It is believed that before you wear the one percenter sign, you must have committed several violent acts for the group. Sometimes, in addition to these symbols, members go a step further to reiterate their loyalty to the gang by inscribing the letters AFFA. This four-word acronym stands for Angel Forever, Forever Angel. Officials say these brazen tattoos are used by criminal gangs to intimidate rivals and law-abiding citizens. In most cases, members of this notorious motorcycle club would ink at least two of these signs on their body once they officially join the group. But it is definitely not uncommon to find find members wearing all three symbols and perhaps even more. Speaking of more, Dane Bashkovich, the leader of the Hells Angels Bikers Club in West Australia, has taken his support for the group to the extreme by covering his entire body with tattoos. Renowned as the most tattooed biker in the world, Dane's excessive body art has earned him huge publicity in the past. The words Hells Angels are boldly written on his forehead, and the one percenter symbol is boldly etched on his neck. However, the fierce-looking gangster may now have to pay hundreds of dollars to clean off these symbols and other Hells Angels tattoos on his body after he was kicked out of the club in 2022. Aside from his controversial banishment from the gang, Dane Brajkovic could also face the wrath of the law after a new law was enacted in West Australia prohibiting tattoos relating to 46 biker clubs in the country, including the Coffin Cheaters, Gypsy Jokers, Banditos, and the Hells Angels. John Quigley, the West Australian Attorney General, believes that this newly enacted law is the toughest and most comprehensive reforms to fight organized crime of of all Australian states and territories. Meanwhile, the acting police commissioner in the West Australian region, Cole Blanche, has a bit of useful advice for Dane and other tattooed bikers, who are expected to immediately find intuitive ways to conceal their codified arts. I would start with things like band-aids or makeup, certainly, or have it removed, or alternatively, people can choose the option not to live in Western Australia if this law passes, Blanche said in an interview with 6PR. Founded back in 1948 in the city of California, the Hells Angels Bikers Club has grown in in heaps and bounds with 467 chapters in 59 countries across the world. Before his death on June 29, 2022, Ralph Sonny Barger, the founding member of the Oakland, California chapter of the Hells Angels Motorcycle, described the gang as a bunch of fun-loving guys, but their actions suggest otherwise. In fact, based on research and statistical data gathered over the years, some sources believe that the Hells Angels is actually a criminal enterprise disguised as a biker's club. In 2009, 16 high-ranking members of the gang were indicted on several charges, including murder, after a 21-month-long operation where undercover operatives infiltrated the Oakland, California chapter. The accused members denied these allegations, and most of them got away with light jail sentences. But that didn't do much to whitewash the reputation of Hell's Angels, as there is several incriminating evidence of the gang's involvement in violence. In December 1969, a young man named Meredith Hunter and his girlfriend Bretta Hoff attended the Altamont Free Concert. Perhaps out of excitement, the 18-year-old black teen teenager climbed onto the stage during the performance of Rolling Stones. Understandably, Hunter's incursion into the stage area angered members of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, who were tasked with keeping members off the stage, so they approached Hunter and violently gave him his marching orders. Unimpressed by the way he was rough-handled and the behavior of the gang throughout the night, the teenager drew a long-barreled 22-inch Smith & Wesson revolver to scare off the Hells Angels gangsters who had continued to assault him, even away from the spotlight of the stage. But he was never going to be able to match the violence of a notorious gang like the Hells Angels. As the brawl continued, Hunter was stabbed by a gang member named Angel Alan Passaro and was eventually beaten to death by other Hells Angels gangsters. Alan Passaro was charged with murder in 1971, but a 12-man jury concluded that the gangster was innocent because they believed he stabbed the teenager in self-defense. However, footage of the incident was captured and made available to millions of viewers worldwide. So, even a favorable judgment like the one Passaro wasn't enough to repair the gang's irredeemable reputation. In fact, as a result of the gang's long history of committing violent crimes, the Hells Angels are outlawed in Berlin and in the Netherlands. Their activities are also being monitored and scrutinized by local and international law enforcement agencies in many parts of the world, and so are their symbols and tattoos. In other words, getting a Hells Angel tattoo is a bad idea, well except you want the feds constantly chasing you down. Albanian Mafia Tattoos Unlike most other mafia groups that adopt multiple symbols, the Albanian Mafia are mostly 
closely identified by the symbol of the double-headed eagle. Occasionally, you might find gangsters rocking other tattoos like this one right here. However, the double-headed eagle symbol, which also features on the country's flag, is the predominant symbol among members of the gang. The double-headed eagle is one of the most iconic Indo-European symbols, representing different beliefs across several religious cultures, including Christianity and paganism. The double-headed eagle is believed to have originated from the Hittite Empire sometime in the 16th century. After this era, the symbol went AWOL for about two millennia before making a grand return in the latter days of the Jewish Empire, where it was used as chandeliers in Ashkenazi synagogues and on household items and other basic objects like the temple menorah, Torah shields, and tombs. Back then, European Jews saw the double-headed eagle as a symbol of loyalty to the government. This belief is shared by members of the Albanian mafia gangs of today. Even on the national level, the double-headed eagle is seen as a symbol of heroism, strength, and resilience in Albania. And considering their level of success, it's obvious that the mafia gangs in this small Balkan country also draw inspiration from the symbol. The Albanian mafia gangs are by far the most lethal Marco trafficking groups in the whole of Europe, with efficient divisions in several countries in the Balkan region, and even beyond to include countries like Germany, France, Italy, Belgium, and the United Kingdom. According to reports, investigators have also cited significant footprints of Albanian mafia gangs in North Africa, specifically between Morocco and Libya. As of 2022, official reports confirmed that there were at least 40 Albanian gangs operating in Germany. Across the North Sea and the UK, Albanian gangs are firmly in charge of the narcotic trafficking schemes in the country. And thanks to the efficiency of their operation, customers can now get banned substances like cocaine quicker than they would get a delivery pizza. At the last count, the cocaine market in the UK is believed to be worth between $2.5 and $6.2 million, and a large chunk of this profits ends up with the bosses of the Albanian mafia gangs. Their strong connections with South American cartels and Italian mafia means Albanian gangs are able to sell the cheapest and purest cocaine in the history of the UK. They have shown that you don't have to be greedy to dominate drug markets. They've gone down the route of sustainable prices, good quality. As part of their illicit activities, Albanian gangs are also heavily involved in human trafficking. In 2018, the UK National Crime Agency claimed that Albanian criminal gangs were responsible for the significant increase in victims of human trafficking in the country. Around 12,000 of the 45,000 illegal immigrants who crossed into the UK in 2022 were Albanians. Around 2,000 of these victims were females who were smuggled into the country as part of an illegal prostitution scheme that generates hundreds of millions every year. In 2003, Luan Plakici, one of the frontrunners of this scheme, who reportedly made over $1 million from trafficking, was arrested and jailed for 23 years. With such a devastating reputation, security operatives have learned to pay extra attention to Albanian gangs over the years. And surely getting any body art that's synonymous with the gang ultimately puts you up for extra scrutiny, both from law enforcement agencies and rival gangs. Aryan Brothers Tattoos Like the MS-13 and the Chinese Triad Criminal Groups, members of the Aryan Brotherhood Gang have a wealth of codified body arts to choose from. The catalog of tattoos adopted by the gang includes some symbols affiliated with the neo-Nazi movement like the swastika and lightning bolts. Others sometimes opt for an image of a Viking warrior, but undoubtedly the most popular body ink art adopted by the violent gang is the symbol of a shamrock placed directly over the letters AB, which obviously is the initials for the gang's name. Gang members sometimes etch the number six in each leaf. The shamrock is known worldwide as the symbol of Ireland and represents qualities such as faith, love, and hope. The Aryan Brotherhood Gang is a notorious white supremacist group renowned for its violent activities across the United States. Founded in 1964 in the San Quentin State Prison, the Aryan Brotherhood is the oldest, largest, and deadliest crime syndicate in the United States. The group was formed by a group of Irish prisoners at the San Quentin State Prison in California to resist segregation from other prisoners. But over the years, Years, they've evolved to become a radical criminal group with active involvement in several illicit enterprises like extortion, murder, prostitution, illegal gambling, and drug trafficking. The gang's watchword, Blood In, Blood Out, tells you everything you need to know about it. Historians believe this motto is inspired by the initiation rituals of the Aryan Brotherhood gang, which mandates prospective members to kill or injure a law enforcement agent or a rival gangster of another race. Within the confines of the origin, Aryan Brotherhood gang members are sometimes required to perform a range of 
of tasks, which include theft, impersonation, murder, and drug trafficking. A portion of the profits accrued from these illegal schemes are handed over to the boss of the gang. Nowadays, the gang has well over 20,000 members and continues to operate viciously across several prison facilities across the United States based on a set of strict rules and regulations. First and foremost, the law of the gang stipulated that gang members must extend help to their colleagues throughout their stay in prison and even outside confinement. This rule is further enshrined in the gang's membership pledge which reads, an Aryan brother is without a care. He walks where the weak and heartless won't dare. And if by chance he should stumble and lose control, his brothers will be there to help reach his goal. For a worthy brother, no need is too great. He need not but ask. Fulfillment's his fate. For an Aryan brother, death holds no fear. Vengeance will be his, through his brothers still here. This membership pledge also emphasizes the group's values, which include revenge and discrimination against people of color. For the Aryan Brotherhood, murder is a way to make a social statement. If blacks attack whites, we send a message. We go pick one of their shot callers. We catch them walking across the prison yard under guard escort and handcuffs. It don't matter. We're going to butcher him in front of God and everybody at high noon in the middle of the yard. And it's not just going to be a few clean stab marks. It's going to be a vicious, brutal killing. Because that's how brothers take care of business, and a brother's work is never done. Obviously, the message propagated by the Aryan Brotherhood membership pledge is not welcomed in the current society, and so are the various symbols associated with them. Mexican Mafia Tattoos Mexican Mafias need no introduction. Their contributions to the widespread violence and drug dealings across South America and North America is well documented, but even more prominent is their appetite for a stylish lifestyle and extravagant tattoos. The main symbol adopted by Mexican gangs is an image of an eagle holding a snake in its mouth. This symbol is often placed on a set of letters such as EME or MM. Other famous tattoo designs adopted by the gangs include symbols of guns, naked humans, preferably humans or three dots. All of these designs represent different values including strength, authority, dominance, power, family bond, fearlessness, and recklessness. So for anyone looking to ink any of these symbols on their skin, it is paramount to understand what they mean and the messages they promote before adopting them. Having one of these notorious body arts is one of the most legitimate pieces of evidence that a person belongs to a crime syndicate group in Mexico's criminal underworld. After the first inkling, the number of tattoos on a gangster's body is expected to grow as their career in the underground world progresses. And in situations where this so-called gangster finds himself in prison, these tattoos are to identify them. But perhaps more importantly, a prisoner's tattoo sometimes determines whether he is safe or not. Getting these tattoos isn't exactly a walk in the park as most people would think. In fact, it's almost impossible to get a Mexico Mafia body ink drawn in a tattoo parlor. So, for most members, the only way to get them done is to go underground or while they're in prison. At the peak of their powers, Mexican cartels controlled a significant part of the narco-trafficking business across the Americas. At some point, Mexico's biggest drug trafficking gang, the Sinaloa Cartel, was responsible for a significant amount of the cocaine smuggled into the United States through the Mexican border. The organized crime history in Mexico dates back to the late 1970s, when Miguel Felix Gallardo founded the Guadalajara Cartel. In 1989, he was arrested and extradited to the United States, where he was eventually tried and failed for 40 years. The drug lord remains in prison even till the days, but the seed of crime that he sowed several years ago has developed so much that it has spiraled out of control. And despite the increased efforts on the part of the government to curb the activity of organized crime groups in Mexico, these notorious groups seem to have become bigger and more efficient over the years. For context, since 2006, when the Mexican government renewed its efforts to clamp down on violent gang activities, activities in the country. Over 340,000 people have lost their lives in the turf war that ensued afterward. For gang members who are lucky enough to outlive these turf wars, they're constantly being hunted by law enforcement agencies and rival gangs. And you can imagine that this will most likely be the case for anyone who adopts any symbol associated with a Mexican mafia gang. Thanks for watching this video to the end. If you've enjoyed it, please click on any of the cards on the screen to watch more interesting videos like this one.